laptop computer keyboards can sometimes be an issue. Some things you might run into is that you're getting numbers instead of letters or letters instead of numbers. And because there is a very limited real estate on a laptop keyboard, you don't really have a separate numeric keypad to work with. And so there are some locking keys on there that may change your your regular keyboard into a numeric keyboard. So look for those number lock and scroll lock and function lock capabilities. The scroll lock is one that's on every computer these days. People don't really use it very much, but if it's turned on, you may find that instead of your mouse moving around, your function keys moving around properly, or your arrow keys moving around properly in a spreadsheet, the spreadsheet may be moving around your cursor, which is a little bit backwards. And that may be because your scroll lock is turned on. There's usually an F lock or a function lock or something of that sort that's providing secondary functions. We've already seen that with our video capabilities. And there may not be some type of light or visual notification for these. It just may not be an option on these laptop devices to have a specific light whenever scroll lock is turned on or num lock is turned on or function lock is turned on. On regular keyboard you do have lights like that. Here's the function. Here's a here's the caps lock. Here's a numeric lock. You'll be able to see that. But on your laptops, you don't don't often have those. Sometimes they just don't even put a light at all. Sometimes they do. It depends on the model of your laptop. On your laptop itself, there's a number of input devices that are available. You have not only this keypad that's here, this touchpad that you can use to move the cursor around. You sometimes have also this tiny little button that you can use to move the mouse around the screen as well. Usually it's a personal preference as to exactly which one you like to use. But you can see that each one of those, whether you're using this, this flat pad with the buttons or you're using the mouse, it's got its own buttons available. They're the same left button and right button. They're just in different places. You can take advantage of those no matter what input type you happen to be using. Now that tablets are becoming more widespread, we start to see people using styluses on their systems a lot more. The stylus is this little pin, this extra little device that's set off to the side. Instead of having a mouse or a keyboard, that's what you use to provide the input to this machine. One thing that's important is that the stylus and the digitizer have to be in sync with each other. They have to know about each other, and they have to know that if you click the middle of the screen with your stylus, that it really is clicking the middle of the screen. If it's not quite right, sometimes there's software on these tablet devices that allow you to calibrate this, where you can click the top corner and the bottom right corner, and it figures out exactly where the screen is in relation to where you're clicking, and everything's back in synchronization again. On laptop devices, we make extensive use of wireless technologies. We really want to be completely disconnected when we're on our portable devices. We don't want to connect to a network link. We don't want to connect to power. We want to be able to use this in any type of scenario. And so when you run into problems with wireless, it becomes a little bit more of a challenge. The antennas on these connections are usually inside the laptop itself, usually connecting to a piece of metal, like the LCD display is sometimes the antenna for your wireless card. You may also want to look at the wireless card itself and make sure that it's connected, that wireless antenna connection is on there. We'll look at that in a moment. These are often connected through the case itself. So you really can't get access to those unless you take the laptop completely apart so that you can see exactly where that antenna wire is going. If you're working on the card or you've opened up the memory slot or you're inside of the machine, it's very, very easy to dislodge those tiny little wires. So make sure that if you're in there doing an upgrade, doing a replacement. I've had someone come to my office and replace a piece inside of my laptop. And when they put it back together and left, they left the connection disconnected. And I had to go back in there and reconnect everything back up again. Fortunately, it's not too difficult. You usually have access to the cards that are plugged right into the device. And you can see the wire that's here just hanging off. That's the wire that I would use to connect to my wireless link. And it plugs into these tiny little ports. This main wireless connection is right here. That's where I want to take my wireless connection plug into the main. There's also an auxiliary connection. There's a black wire here that plugs into the auxiliary. As long as they are connected, then we are in great shape. If they're disconnected, you may realize exactly why you're not getting any wireless signal, because you're not connected to the wireless antenna. Let's see if we can answer some questions about our laptop issues. Our first question is, what's the most common way to switch between a built-in LCD laptop screen and an external monitor? Well, most commonly, we see a secondary function key that's on the keyboard that allows us to move back and forth. So if it's not showing up on your external monitor, make sure you've used that function key to force it out that, that external port so you can see it on the external monitor. What's a common cause of an LCD backlight that's not lit? 
You'll see this if you can almost see what's happening on the screen, but you can't really read it well. It's probably because that backlight isn't lighting up, and usually it's a bad LCD inverter that's not providing us with the light behind the scenes. And last question, to which component does the wireless antenna usually connect? Well, that antenna is connecting up to our wireless mini PCI card. We saw a picture of that earlier, and we saw exactly where we can connect those wires for that antenna so that we're now able to get the signal out and receive the signal just fine. That covers what we need to know with laptop issues from section 2.4, where we've learned about power conditions, the video, the keyboard, our pointers and stylus, and lastly, our wireless card issues. If you'd like to see any of our other free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message board, send me an email, and much more. You can visit our website at freeaplus.com.